hello everyone and welcome back to another video from netmaster zone channel and uh, welcome back to another video from ccna series uh, if you remember in the previous video we just uh, speak about the uh, spanning tree and uh, the different the standard of spanning tree and also the different port state of the spanning tree but in this video we are going to speak about how actually this spanning tree works uh, before that uh, I'm just going to review the previous uh, slides in the last video uh, to refresh your mind about the spanning tree first uh, what is the spanning tree we said that the spanning tree is a layer 2 protocol that is used to prevent the uh, loop inside the uh, LAN and uh, as you know that uh, when a switch is sent a packet uh, at the first time when the packet goes to the destination or it's sent to an uh, unknown destination in this case the switch doesn't know the MAC address of the uh, that packet then it just uh, broadcast that packet to all ports and of course this packet will receive to other switches and the other switch will do the same things and uh, this broadcast will continue inside the LAN and if we don't have any uh, loop revision mechanism uh, this uh, broadcasting will uh, make a loop inside the LAN and of course when a loop happened inside the LAN it will affect the performance of the LAN of the network and also the performance of switches uh, the memory the processor and uh, so on and uh, it will uh, down the uh, of course the network in the most case uh, then uh, we just uh, speak about the different uh, states of the ports uh, we said that uh, we have a disabled ports of course the disabled port doesn't participate in the spanning tree and uh, it will receive the bpdu uh, but it doesn't send any bpdu or uh, uh, of course it doesn't uh, uh, learn any mac address here then the blocking uh, state the blocking state is same it uh, same like the disable port uh, just one difference that it is uh, actually the blocking state uh, participate in the spanning tree and uh, of course it will receive the bpdu but doesn't forward any bpdu and doesn't learn any mac address then listening and learning we said uh, this uh, two state uh, uh, in the in both uh, state actually we uh, just receiving the um, bpdu uh, but it doesn't send any bpdu and it doesn't learn any mac address also in the learning state it's same and uh, we will uh, speak about the listening and learning uh, in the um, in this video actually when we goes to uh, how the spanning tree works uh, then the forwarding state of course in the forwarding state in sending and receiving the bpdu and also uh, will learn the mac address uh, inside the uh, spanning tree then we uh, speak about the different uh, standard of the spanning tree uh, the original spanning tree is 802.1d and it's a uh, uh, first implementation of the spanning tree and uh, other standards of the spanning tree of course is a change uh, in this uh, standard uh, it's a, a slow uh, version of the spanning tree and nowadays uh, it's uh, rarely used inside the switches uh, then we have the rapid spanning tree of course this standard is uh, uh, faster than uh, the previous standard is uh, uh, most uh, switches now is using this standards like UAV and uh, also ZTE switches and uh, then uh, please notice that uh, this two standard it's only using uh, can uh, make a single instance of the spanning tree the uh, stp and also rstp uh, both of them is only uh, make a single instance of a spanning tree uh, what is that means uh, for example uh, when we have 100 VLANs and uh, uh, in the single instance of a spanning tree uh, only one switch can be root bridge for all this 100 VLAN we cannot actually make uh, different switches uh, to be a root bridge inside the uh, network uh, for different VLANs but in the multiple instance of a spanning tree uh, a standard of IEEE 802.1s uh, in this uh, standard actually it's open standard and uh, we can make a, a different uh, multiple instance of the spanning tree and makes uh, uh, different switches as a root bridge for different VLANs 
Then uh, let's go to the standard of um, Cisco in the spanning tree. We have PVST plus and the RPVST plus, and both of them. Uh, please notice that it is P means per VLAN spanning tree, and uh, this pillar, uh, per VLAN spanning tree it means that we can uh, make one switch as a root bridge for VLAN one and another switch as a root bridge, for example, for VLAN two and so on. And uh, the R RPVST is a rapid uh, version of the PVST and uh, it doesn't use any uh, 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 timer to uh, converge, uh, but this one is using the timer. It takes uh, uh, almost 50 seconds to uh, converge and to uh, select a different state of the ports, but in the RSTP, it only takes two to three seconds uh, to converge and to uh, uh, select the different state of the ports. Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, start our uh, lesson here and how this spanning tree actually works. The spanning tree works in the four, five steps. And if you learn this five step, uh, I'm sure that you will be able to answer any question inside the spanning tree. And also you will easily guess which switch is going to be the root bridge and uh, which uh, ports can be root, root ports, designated ports or, or blocking ports. Actually, let's first, we said that the uh, first one is the selecting the root bridge. What is the root bridge actually? Let's go to our diagram. I just create a very a simple diagram of uh, uh, in the spanning tree just to learn. Uh, in the next videos, I'm going to make this diagram a little bit uh, uh, complex to guess actually to learn more and uh, about the selection of the um, root bridge and also the different set of the ports. Uh, but here, if you learn everything here, of course, you will easily guess uh, the um, uh, spanning tree convergence and the uh, uh, root bridge and so on. What is the root bridge? We said that what is the root bridge? Root bridge is a switch that when we send a packet and uh, all these packets will pass through the root bridge and then go to the destination. Let's assume that we have, a, for example, a host here connected to switch B and another host in switch C. When we send a packet, we just send a ping from uh, switch A, uh, switch B to switch C. This packet will not, not go directly to from switch B to switch C. It will first go to switch A and then go back to switch C because of the spanning tree. And uh, why it's go to switch A because the switch A is the root bridge. Then the root bridge is a switch that all the traffic will uh, go through the root bridge to uh, receive in the destination. Okay, let's go back uh, to our different steps of the spanning tree. The step one is electing the root bridge. Actually, this how this root bridge is elected. Here uh, in the step one, you can see selecting the root bridge. When uh, uh, we just connect uh, switches together, in the first, all switches trying to send the BPDU. And uh, this, uh, let's go to diagram. In this diagram, you can see that when we connect the switches together, of course, this all the switches will send BPD to each other to uh, learn about each other and to select the uh, root bridge. And this, what is this BPD actually contain? This BPD contain the root cost, the switch bridge ID, and the root bridge ID. You can see here that this is a, a sample of a BPD. It has a root cost of zero, switch bridge ID. How actually this uh, BID is calculated? Uh, the BID in the uh, Cisco switches is a fixed number, uh, 32769 uh, plus VLAN ID. You can see I just put it plus plus. It means that uh, we should add this uh, VLAN ID uh, with this number. Uh, by default, the uh, VLAN ID is one because we are speaking about the VLAN one. If we have VLAN two, of course, it will be two will add to this number, but this number is fixed. And then we'll concatenate it with the switch MAC address. What is this switch MAC address actually? Let's go to our switch and see. Uh, I'm going to physical and uh, uh, you can see here that we have different ports in the physical switch and all these ports, of course, they have a, a MAC address. And uh, uh, 
But which MAC address actually is going to be selected as a, uh, to calculate this bridge ID? None of them, because switch as a base MAC address also. Let me show you, show version. You can see here that we have a base Ethernet MAC address, and this is the base Ethernet MAC address. This is a unique MAC address for every switches, and it's a burn in, and you cannot change this MAC address uh, at least in the Cisco switches that I know, uh, you will not be able to change this MAC address. It's uh, generated by the company as and it's born in inside the uh, switch. And this MAC address will use to um, actually create this bridge ID. Okay, now we know what is the uh, bridge ID. Bridge ID is a fixed number of. 32768 uh, plus VLAN ID and then uh, concatenated with the MAC address. Here you can see that uh, the, for example, I just uh, put all A for MAC address, uh, uh, switch bridge ID is 32769 and it's concatenated with the MAC address here. And uh, also the root bridge is same. Why it's same? Because when uh, we connect this switch together, all these switches things that they are they can be the root bridge and uh, they just create this bpdu with the cost of zero and the switch bridge id of uh, uh, this number uh, plus one and then the uh, base mac address of the uh, switch then it will send this bpdu to all the switches of course switch b and switch c receive this bpdu and also they will send it back to each other again switch b will send its own bpdu and also the switch a bpdu to switch c and switch c will do the same and send it to switch b when this bpdu actually received for example let's speak about uh, switch a and switch b uh, when this bpdu received in switch b Switch B will uh, compare this BPDU with its own BPDU here. Let's compare these two together. You can see the cost is same and this number is fixed, but this MAC address 0060 here is 0050. And if we come here, you can see the lowest bridge ID will become the root bridge. Now between these two 00. 50 is uh, smaller than 0060 of course then uh, switch b will know that uh, uh, the switch a is a root bridge for him and if we compare this uh, bpd from switch c you can see that the fixed number and 00 d0 of course this one is also uh, bigger than uh, the bridge id of uh, switch a then this two switch will knows that uh, the switch a is the root bridge now the root bridge selected let's go to the second step in the second step you can see that the place the root bridge interfaces into forwarding state now the job of the root bridge is very easy when it's selected as a root bridge it just put all its interfaces as a forwarding state okay let's note it here uh, forwarding state and this port will also be in the forwarding state now these two ports become in the forwarding state let's go to step 3 what is the step 3 each non root switches selects its root port when uh, one switch is selected as a root bridge of course the other switches is the non root switches then this uh, non-root switches needs to uh, select the state of, of its own uh, ports to the um, root bridge. And how this uh, selection happened, it's using the calculating the cost to the root bridge. What is this cost? This cost is the default value that is uh, assigned by the Cisco. And you can see in the different uh, standard of the Ethernet, uh, it has a different cost. Here for 10 megabit, we have 100 and 100 megabit 19, 1 GB 4 and 2 GB 2. Uh, but uh, nowadays we have other standards, uh, fast Ethernet, uh, uh, that is the fast Ethernet. Of course, fast Ethernet is 100 megabit. Uh, my means is a faster uh, ports. 
that is 10g and 100g and these two standards actually is not uh, uh, defined in this uh, old version of the um, uh, cost for the spanning tree uh, but uh, of course Cisco just update this and uh, uh, just change this cost to add a value for this two also and uh, you can check this in the internet uh, they have different costs but very higher than this I think for uh, 10 GB is uh, 22,000 something um, and uh, it's actually the new version but now we are speaking about uh, um, the old version I cannot say the old version because only the uh, we have uh, up to um, uh, 1 GB Ethernet here in the uh, packet tracer uh, we are just uh, speaking about this uh, uh, old version here not for the new version okay uh, then uh, now here in the uh, in this diagram you can see that we are using the uh, gigabit ports it means that the cost of these ports is four let's add a four here and also a four here and we also have a cost between these two of four okay now we are going to calculate this cost when this uh, switch is sending a VPDU, um, of course with the cost of zero because this is the um, root bridge and when it comes to switch B it add the cost of this link and it will receive with the cost of four in the switch B and also here in this side in the switch C it will send it with the cost of zero because this is the root bridge and when it goes to the link and it will add this cost of the link it become four then it will receive with the cost of four in the switch C but when it's receiving switch B and switch C they also will forward this uh, VPDU to each other it means that the VPDU of switch A will go to switch C and also from switch C will come to switch B in this case when it just send it back with the cost of four it will add this value of four again to that and then this uh, VPDU here from switch uh, A will receive with the cost of eight and here in switch B also it will receive with the cost of eight then when just this switch compare this two you can see that uh, it will receive uh, this VPD of switch A with the cost of four from this link and it received the VPDU of switch A from this link to with the cost of uh, eight then it will knows that uh, this link is near to the root bridge then it will put this uh, link as a root port um, I can say to the near because uh, it may be another switch here and uh, uh, it may add some cost also uh, but at all uh, when it uh, just compare the cost uh, between uh, the links and it will receive uh, it will put the uh, lowest cost port as a root now this port become a root and also uh, this switch C same it will compare the cost from this link when it received the VPDU from the root uh, from the root bridge and uh, it will compare that it will receive it from uh, this link as a uh, eight cost of eight and it will receive this from this link with the cost of four then it will put this link as a root now the root uh, the root port is selected here let's go to our slides then the lowest cost means that the nearest path is root bridge it means that because it has a lower cost from these two links then it is the nearest uh, link to the uh, root bridge then it will put this two port as a root it means that these two switches just change its uh, uh, state to the root now let's go to uh, step four in step four the remaining links needs to uh, actually uh, choose the designated uh, port what is the remaining link here now this links uh, actually uh, just converged and then uh, they changed this states now this link is a remaining link now we need to uh, choose a designated port between these two this one or this one and how they select this designated port uh, let's get back to the slides and uh, here you can see first they uh, just compare the root cost to the root bridge and uh, here if you see uh, if we send the packet from this link to switch A uh, 
uh, it will uh, get to switch a with the cost of uh, four and four it's eight and if it send it uh, switch b send this uh, bpdu to switch uh, a from this side it will again receive with the cost of eight then uh, the cost is same uh, we need to have something else to select this and the next one is the comparing the B, uh, bid and the lowest bid of course will win and if uh, here you can see if we compare this bid with the bid of switch c uh, we can see that the bid of uh, switch c is uh, uh, bigger than the bid of switch a then these two switch will decide that uh, the switch b port can be the designated port okay let's let's mark this as a designated port and uh, okay this is a designated port and the next step let's get back to the slide and of course we have some other comparison is uh, also if the bid is the same then it will compare the port priority and uh, what is this port priority actually uh, it's a uh, option uh, that uh, actually give us this uh, ability to uh, engineering this uh, port selection here uh, in the designated port and also in the root port we have also same um, if we have the same cost then we can uh, change the uh, uh, port priority to select the root port and it's uh, completely depend to us uh, for selecting the port priority we will speak about that in the uh, of course in the future videos and also we have something else here that compare the port number if the port priority is the same by default if we don't change anything in the port priority the port priority will be same in all uh, ports then it will compare the port number and the lowest port number of course will win and uh, here you can see that uh, this is gigabit 02 and this is gigabit 01 then uh, of course the gigabit 01 will win to become the designated port but here the tie is in the uh, bid and the smaller bid will win and now the switch uh, uh, B uh, wins and it's become the, uh, uh, the its port is become the designated port and let's go to the next step the step 5 all other ports are put into the uh, blocking state any other port that is left it will be in the blocking state and only this port is left and of course it will go to the blocking state let's uh, mark it as a block now actually uh, the uh, spanning tree is uh, uh, converged and uh, all the ports that takes in on states let's check actually this states let's go to switch a and check show spanning tree for vlan one and here you can see that uh, the state of these ports are in the forwarding states uh, gigabit 0 1 and gigabit 0 2 this is gigabit 0 1 I believe and this one is gigabit 0 2 and both of them are in the uh, forwarding state and uh, let's go to switch B and check here show spanning tree VLAN 1 and here you can see that uh, these two ports here uh, this uh, gigabit 0 1 is rule of root you can see that this is gigabit 01 and it's selected as a root and here uh, the gigabit 02 of course this one is in the designated rule and both of them in, is in the forwarding states and it means that they are receiving uh, sending and receiving the bpdu now let's go to switch c and check here show spanning tree vlan 1 and here you can see that uh, this uh, uh, port is a root port here and also the uh, gigabit 01 is in the blocking state now it's uh, alternate it means that if any of this port is down then this port will uh, go back to the uh, forwarding state of course uh, to uh, converge uh, but now it's in the blocking state and uh, i said that we are going to speak about the different state of the ports what is the diff diff different states uh, 
uh, the disable state uh, as I said that uh, it's a state that uh, it doesn't uh, uh, participate in the spanning tree and it doesn't send and receive VPDU uh, it doesn't receive uh, send VPDU and participate and uh, learn MAC address uh, blocking a state uh, it's a state that is uh, uh, receiving VPDU and uh, and also um, it, it's uh, not learning the MAC address but listening and learning I said that we are going to speak about this too what is this listening and learning uh, during this process when this uh, port is going to be uh, becoming the forwarding states actually these two ports just uh, they are in the listening mode it means that they are listening to learn what they should uh, decide to be it should be blocking a state it should be designated or it should be a root port then uh, here is the um, we can say that the listening state and when uh, it decide to become uh, any of this state then it uh, try to learning and then uh, it will go to one of this state to become a root to become a blocking and so on uh, this is the different steps of the uh, spanning tree that uh, different state port states of the spanning tree uh, that I said we are going to speak about that uh, okay let's do something actually let's test something let's go to switch C and uh, turn off this uh, root port here and uh, conf T let me go to that interface gigabit 0 by 2 0 by 2 and shut it down when I shut down this port now if I check the show spanning tree VLAN 1 you can see that uh, this port uh, port gigabit 01 this one is in the listening state it means that they are listening to other sites to learn what it should do and uh, in the moment it will should go to the learning state you can see that it's now uh, transit to the learning state and in a moment it will become the uh, root port and it will come in the forwarding state now you can see that when one port is down for example this link is gone then this uh, different state of uh, this port will go to different state to uh, select actually it's a state as a uh, forwarding and if i just uh, turn it back turn it on back uh, which port it was uh, gigabit 0 by 2 interface gigabit 0 by 2 and no shut now you can see again these two ports will go uh, to different states to uh, vlan show spanning tree vlan 1 spanning tree uh, you can see now uh, this uh, port is in the learning state and this uh, port is uh, just get back to the blocking state and in a moment you can see that it will uh, change to forwarding state from learning it means it lesson then learn and then uh, decide to become as a forwarding state all of this port is same when I turn off one of this ports any any of this uh, anywhere for example this one this one or this one uh, then this uh, uh, spanning tree will uh, uh, converge again and will decide the different state of the ports and uh, actually this sending BPDU is not just the, for the first time it's like a, I can say it's like a blood uh, and it's uh, sent every moment uh, to uh, actually um, decide this state if anything is happened here and uh, it's another vpdu that's called uh, tcn vpdu uh, it's a topology change vpdu uh, when something happened uh, or any of this port is down then that switch will generate a tcn vpdu and that tcn vpdu again goes to all the switches and uh, uh, of course when the topology change then this uh, port again will uh, converge and will decide the different states uh, to um, actually uh, keep this this residency here now uh, we have residency here and if any of this link is down uh, the, uh, but uh, it doesn't affect the LAN because we have another path uh, to uh, goes to the 
different uh, uh, part of the uh, actual network uh, okay um, I believe this video is um, finished but uh, actually here we just uh, use a very simple uh, diagram to uh, know uh, how actually the spanning tree works uh, but in the actual uh, network it will be very uh, com uh, complex of course topology and uh, many switches connected many uh, different places and uh, in this case uh, uh, of course the stp has more job to do to select different state of the ports and to select the uh, root bridge um, in the next video i'm going to make this topology a little bit uh, bigger and uh, a little bit complex and uh, then uh, we will uh, go to every step and uh, we'll check actually uh, how the spanning tree decides about the different uh, about the root bridge and of course about the different set of the ports but if you learn this um, topology here uh, you can easily uh, decide how actually the ports can um, actually how the spanning tree works and how it select the different set of the ports and also the root bridge you can easily guess that okay let's finish our video here and uh, please let me know your question in the comment and if you have any question about this video or any other videos uh, you can put your uh, question in the comment and i will try to answer them and uh, for now thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe the net mastery zoom channel